next question. Talk to me about the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> How much, see, you, if you spend time in the Carolinas and you're like, just hearing you tell your stories, there's so much passion in your voice still today, Steve. I love it. It's like, I'm like the hair on my arm is standing up listening to you tell your stories. Cause I know you and how passionate you are. It's awesome. But what, what was it like to work with Dusty? Right. I, as, as somebody that went to the Philadelphia Civic Center regularly to, um, yeah. to see Dusty and the, and the horsemen and all these guys, I like, we have a show in Atlanta and um, it, it's a TV taping. So I don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, like with Dreamer, like you, he'll refer to himself as Dream all the time, like third person. And um, he'll talk about himself <laughs> in third person. Like one of the great things about Tommy Dreamer is that like he has no problem calling himself the Dream. So like for months it would be like, uh, you know, what are we doing tonight? Ah, oh, you're working with the Dream and this and so uh get the tv and i say hey do you know what i'm doing tonight he's like yeah you're working with the dream i go so, so what are we doing and he goes no 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 you're working with the dream and i'm like what and he like points out and dusty's at the end of the uh little arena and i'm like what are we doing he goes i think a promo he's like um ask paul paul they figure it out and they come up with a scenario of joey styles will interview me it'll be about the um Olympus get situation and it'll turn to Dusty and we'll tell people that we're not filming anymore because, you know, Dusty just gotten released like that week. So I, I think there was a worry that like, we couldn't even show him on TV. So we were going to play that it was a TV segment with the idea of not playing it for TV. It would be something for the house and we'd be done with it. But me, I'm excited. And uh, Bill Alfonso comes to me and says, hey, daddy, I put you over with Dream. And I'm like, what? And uh, uh, I walk up to him. I'm like, sir, um, you know, is there anything you'd like to go over? And like in that dusty fashion, he's got his sunglasses on. He pulls them down. He goes, now, kid, if, they, if you're as good as the, they say you are, we don't need to talk <laughs> about anything. And I went, yes, sir. It's like he has no idea like a massive fraud like i have no idea what i'm doing out there so like the only thing dreamer pulls me aside like, don't say anything about justin i'm like okay and um yeah so i went out there and i just had like how do i turn this to dusty and how do i do this and like i know the payoff has to be these elbows but like i'm so excited to take these elbows that I felt like I'm like trying to rush the promo, but I'm I'm trying to live in the moment because I'm a little you're enjoying, you're enjoying a big target on your head. You're like, I'm oh, ready. Yeah, I'm yeah. ready right here. And like and it made it worse is like Jack Victory was super excited before. Like he's like, We're taking some elbows tonight. I'm like, Jack, you're excited. He's like, You're not. I'm like, Jack, I'm like dying inside. I'm just trying not to like be that guy. And he's like, Oh, it's gonna be awesome. He's like, How high are you gonna bump? I go, I'm gonna try and get as Eddie Gilbert high as I can. And um, <laughs> so uh, it comes to the point where I, I just, I hit the line. I said, man, I have no respect for you. I never did, right? And uh, I, hear, I hear him and like, I've watched it a million times since then. I swear I heard him say, slap me. And like, if you watch it back, I have a moment of, did I really hear him that? <laughs> because he's dusty. I'm like, I, like, I just tap him on the face, like, I wasn't supposed to and it gets that quick moment and he starts elbowing us but like you watch it back and it's like like uh, like my cat hitting me or something and uh, he gives us the elbows he does the extended um uh elbow drop on me where you know you gotta sell forever it's a, um but yeah it hits me with the elbow and this and i'm thinking that was the greatest night of my life like yeah i'm done this is what, what do you do like what a cool thing and um Dusty gets back first, and then I get back, and Paul pulls me aside, and he's like, he just told me he wants to work with you. I go, we just worked. And he's like, no. He's like, he wants to do a program with you. I'm like, oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, it was just, it, it was insane. It was insane. We had about uh, 15 in ECW. We had the pay-per-view. We had one pay-per-view match. We had one uh one or two tv like run-ins together and then we had another singles match for tv but the rest we did on oh sorry house shows what's the best piece of advice dusty ever gave you listen to the crowd listen for the people and um 
because there would be times when I would just be like, especially when he was running his promotion in Georgia after ECW, we'd be in like Carrollton, Georgia and this and like, God, he's got to come back. He's got to come back. Like, and I could hear the crowd rumbling. Right. And I, I'd still be pounding on him. I'm like, you gotta come back. And he's like, not yet, baby. Not yet. Right. And I get him. And like, I don't know if it was something in me, like as a heel, like I wanted him to come back so much that like, it was in my face, like, like, and he, he'd finally go, okay, time to go. And he would do his, like his, uh, he was wearing the jeans, like he'd move his, uh, his waistband a little bit. And then he'd start shaking and you could just hear the tension rise. And, and these would be like these little towns that had like 400, 500 people. And we would do it, you know, sometimes two or three days a week. And I would just hear him, the crowd rumble and you just knew it was time. And he would teach me in the back. He's like, if you go a minute too early, baby, you know, what do I got left in this? And you got to listen, you got to listen. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, wow. And, you know, even today, like some of the old school guys are just so in tune with what a crowd does. And, you know, I, I would spend so much time with them, especially after ECW, when he was doing a turnbuckle championship wrestling, I would spend just times like just picking his brain about certain things. Like he was so, um, yeah, I mean, even 2001, 2002, he was so, um, there was a bigger landscape to wrestling that he could see. Like he would always talk about movies. We're making movies, we're making movies. Uh, we're taking them on an emotional roller coaster, baby. And, you know, every match was a different movie. And uh, uh, it, oh, it was just so much fun to see, like, how he would put together a show or how he would listen to a crowd. There, there was one time me and I think it was Eric Watts or Scotty Riggs were working uh, Dusty and Barry in a small town. I want to say Cleveland, Tennessee. And uh, and if Cleveland, Tennessee is a big town and they they listen to your this then they they shit on me i'm sorry it you just like pissed one person from cleveland tennessee, cleveland, tennessee my, one yeah. fa- my one listener from there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah they're, they're gonna be pissed uh so like we got great heat coming out and dusty and barry come out and like holy moly like you know it was like 1985 and he gets in the ring and i hear dusty say uh get on us right so we jump on him and this and he goes all right, baby, let's go home. Ain't gonna get hot in this, right? And I'm like, what? And they <laughs> throw Eric out. Barry hits me with something. Dusty hits me an elbow. One, two, three. It was over in like two minutes. And I'm I'm laying there, and the crowd's cheering. And I'm thinking, we just killed this town. Like, we just gave him a two minute main event. And Dusty and Barry leave, and it's just me and Eric. I think it's me and Eric because he rolls back in, and Eric Watts so funny, and. It, I go, I think we just killed the town. He goes, well, we're going to see, right? And we start coming up and you can just hear the people booing us. Like we had more heat for going two minutes than if we would have went 20. And I- That's awesome. Why did Dusty leave? Was it just a, a, supposed to be a short time, a, sh- a short little run? Yeah, I think it was short term. And then he was going back to WCW anyway. So I think there, there was, you know, there was so much stuff going on at that time that like, you know, having six months off or was it, how long did he stay? So probably seven or eight months he stayed. And then like, he'd given Paul a note, an old time notice. Like, it's not like he just didn't show up one day or like something happened. I think he gave Paul a notice and, you know, he was, he was gone. 